<clears throat> these minutes with you are a period of time which I'd like to speak to you about travel or rather the dramatic reduction of it. If I may take myself as an example of this. I give teachings on a variety of themes, mindfulness, meditation, spirituality, interreligious um, understanding, global issues and so forth. I think the longest time I've spent in Britain since 1977 without leaving might be 11 weeks. And so these journeys take me to three continents a year. A lot of travel uh, uh, is involved. And like significant numbers of other people, suddenly it abruptly comes to a stop. Countries close the borders. Planes stop flying. Trains close down. Transport is reduced. The absence of all of that calls upon us to find another way to live from day to day. We have got used to driving to work, taking the train, the bus, the underground. We've got used to travelling overseas for a few days, a holiday, a business meeting or whatever. That world has currently largely stopped. Those who are out are mostly in public service. What are we going to do? Our journeys are now very short. Might be from one side of the room to the other. It might be going up and down stairs. But we could make short journeys, very short journeys, for calm and presence. A different intention from the wish to get to work, to get to the theatre, to get to the football match, to meet the friend in the restaurant. To go out for a, a drink in the local pub. If that world isn't accessible to us, for a variety of reasons, health, money, government, instructions and more, travel, we need to be with a fresh intention. That's what I mean. Make some space in your home, you stand tall and you slowly, slowly walk up and down very carefully so that the heel of one foot hardly goes in front of the toes of the other. And your intention is not to get anywhere because there's nowhere to go, but you're making walking a meditation to ground yourself. If you have a feather, you could walk and just have the feather in the palm of your hand and just see if you could walk and quietly up and down in a relaxed way, step by step, without the feather slipping off the palm of your hand. You could walk and just concentrate on the direction you are walking yeah? 
and you feel your whole being just walking. So it's not goal orientation, it's not escaping or running away from something behind you, but you walk step by step up and down. You keep contact with the act, the physical act of the walking. You might stop for a moment or two and you just stand like a tree in the earth and you just stand at home. You might just stand very still and look out of the window. You might just stand still and feel the presence of what is around you. So it's introducing fresh ways to be mindful and conscious and saying and acknowledging I can't travel like I used to. I can't just go off and have a drink or pop down the road and get on a bus and see a neighbour or a friend or, or, or whatever. That's, that's not how it is at the moment. Okay. This is how it is. Let me just walk up and down very slowly. Let me just stand and be a conscious human being. Let me just feel my way from one activity to another. I'm sitting, I need to go upstairs to the bathroom. I walk upstairs. I need to take some rest and sleep. Perhaps I travel in my dreams. What was that dream about? Is there anything I, I could learn from that particular dream? So you keep a small diary, some notes. Where is my mind travelling? What way is it travelling? With interest and curiosity? Or is it travelling with into the past and future with anxiety and worry? So there's a different kind of travel now. A different kind of walking and presence. And say, okay, I'm going to adapt to this. Because the other is not available at this time. But this is available. And I want to see where my heart travels, where my mind travels, where I can walk just for the walking experience itself, just for the standing experience itself. Remember my dreams and take a few notes of something maybe I can learn from the dream. And then I have a different sense of what travel is. It's more subtle, but it's authentic and it's real and we might learn a great deal from it. So restraint in one area of travel might be opening up other sense of what travel is. We can travel rather deeply into ourselves and understand ourselves. That's precious too and important. Thank you for listening.